Pacifica and Anya part ways at the entrance to the apartment complex. I am the ninja of justice who will save your Yeah, the ninja of justice. On the way to Yoru's workplace, I remember conceded one-liners to myself. I'm just that elated right now, so elated, I forget to pay attention to my surroundings. Hey, are ninjas normally for justice? Or evil? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm so distracted, I forget to even consider the fact that the town's small enough that Yoru might be nearby on one of her pet clay walks and hear me mumbling to myself. Jeepers? People don't say jeepers when they're surprised these days, you know. Well, I've just got a lot on my mind considering I heard concerning news that my former roommate bamboozled a girl into embezzling an organization's funds. Oof. She's joking. Yoru giggles before collecting herself enough to continue. But thanks, I'm happy you went to such lengths for me. She smiles at me. That alone is enough to make me feel like it was worth the effort. Um, so should we go pay the money now? Well, you see, that money's not enough anymore. It turns out I'm kind of a klutzy. I broke some dishes, wasted some seasonings, and killed Biscuit. Um, remind me who Biscuit is again? One of the poops. Miss Margaret com demanded consempatory damages, I think, and so that's more money added to my debt. No way. What a scumbag employer. No, it's far beyond that. She's just abusing and exploiting her. I've blown my lid at employers who require punching out during breaks, but this is on a completely different level. The only thing you can do at a workplace like that is to get as far away from it as possible. Yoru doesn't belong in that house. I'm reminded of that fact. It might seem like she has no other place to stay besides that house, but that's not the entire truth. I understand. In that case, allow me to ask a hypothetical question. Hmm? What would you think if someone wanted to live with you? I'd be happy, but I can't leave the place where I'm at right now. Why not? Without thinking, I grab Yoru by the collar and bark in her face. There's no possible way you can be happy somewhere you're neglected, exploited, and abused. That lady's been truly alone this whole time. She's so sad. Sure, she's incontinent, she stinks, and she makes no sense, but I think I can understand why she turned out that way. You think you can fix that person? No, I don't think I can fix her, but even if I can't heal her, maybe I can alleviate her pain. In that sense, I don't think it's entirely meaningless for me to be there. That doesn't solve anything. Now instead of having one unhappy person, we've got two. There are tons of unhappy people. What difference does one more make? That's not the point. I don't think it's a bad idea to confront sadness rather than pretend that everything's okay. That's why I think this town is a good place. Is that why you came to this town, Yoru? Is that your goal? I don't have a goal. Just like you, Sayako. But I do. You have a goal? Yeah, and that goal is to live with you back in that room. We're ghosts, hollow specters. We're so empty, we often lose sight of the very fact that we are ghosts. To live with you and grumble about my cramped bed and to meet up with friends every now and then to joke around like it is. And if I'm hollow, then I'm free to fill the void with whatever the hell I want. But you just... I can even fill the void with downright lies if I see fit. I gently place my finger on Yoru's forehead. That's right, I just made up that goal on the spot. I also made up your name on the spot, so it's a little late to sweat the small stuff like that, you know? Yoru smiles awkwardly and giggles, as if she can't find a reason to argue with me there. Looks like you finally admit it now, huh? Yoru copies me and places her index figure on my forehead as well. If I tell you to get down, get down, okay? Hmm? 
Yo, long time no see. Actually, I guess it hasn't been that long, huh? I feel so old. My sense of time has been so vague lately. That was a close one the other day, huh? You okay? I need guns. Huh? Lots of guns. I say, I say that. I say just that as I slam the blood and mud-stained paper bills I stole from the usual men onto the counter. Why do I get the feeling you're using blood money to spill more blood? Do you hate that sort of thing? Lo lets out a big sigh. But it doesn't feel like a sigh of disgust at all. I love it. I'll take all your bullets too. Woohoo! I carry all the guns my money could buy and I run towards the old lady Margaret's house. My feet feel so light. I think to myself as I run. Something like this has happened once before, long ago, or was it more recently? In the end, I guess I've got no way to free her without resorting to violence. Some people force their will upon reality against their desires, sorry. Some people force their will upon reality against the desires of others using power, pain, and despair. If I came across someone like that, I'd probably despise them, I'd hate their guts, but I feel like I've been enduring something like that this whole time, and I hate it. I guess I'm worthless after all. Yura herself chose to stay in a place like that, so shouldn't that be good enough for me? I notice that I've stopped running. How long have I been standing still? I spend several seconds cursing myself for not even knowing what exactly it is I want to do. I know full well that what I'm going to do isn't right. I mutter those words before dashing off once again. And that's why I have to do it. I don't slow down, in fact I speed up, but my feet feel incredibly heavy. Thick curtains are drawn on the other side of the window. They probably serve to protect the inside from the cold, but they also prevent me from seeing what's going on inside. But regardless, this is the optimal point of entry for a home invasion. That's the clu conclusion I've come to after scoping the house out for a while. This is probably the living room window. If yours is right, then this is where Margaret watches TV all day. I shout and shoot the glass window. Okay, I gotta finish things up in a second or less. Cherimoya. I break through the cracked glass and jump inside. The air is humid and contaminated by the stench of human waste and clay. As soon as the foul order hits my nose, I'm already yelling my next line. Get down. When I pull the trigger, all I experience is a loud sound and the force of recoil. Huh? What? But what anyone on top of, but what anyone on the opposite side of the barrel experiences is a horizontal sweep of fully automatic gunfire. <laughs> Kiwi. Oh come on. When I see Yoru fall down with holes blown in her guts, the first thing I feel is rage. Frustration that things didn't go as we had planned in advance, as if one boy simply didn't sing at the choir competition. Though I guess I didn't sing either. Why should I even sing out loud in front of other people? What's the point of choir competitions? I don't get it. To vent my frustration, I kick over a table, sending a lump of clay into the air. When it smacks her in the face, she goes bleh and stops moving completely. She sounds so goofy, it makes me laugh a little. If only Yora were still around to hear herself, I'm sure she'd be laughing with me. Things go silent for a while. And then my own senses are barely able to pick up the sound of running water. A flushing toilet, actually. You! What did you break this time? You thought I wouldn't notice, didn't you? Don't take me for a fool! The door to what seems to be a stairwell opens up and out comes Margaret. <laughs> you! I fired her feet. The elder woman screams and pitifully falls flat on her face. I don't even want to think about where the bullets landed, or if they pierced all the way through. Run! Run away! Don't just space out! She's actually showing concern for Yoru, urging her to run. I guess she can't see Yoru's corpse from where she's fallen. You treated her so roughly, and now you care? You don't understand. I was raising her with love. She's either lying to me, or she's lying to herself, like the senile elderly woman she is. Either way, I ignore her. Everyone has their own definition of love, which is why conflicts and misfortune happen. That's what I think, anyway. 
She was such a kind, gentle, good girl. Always by my side. The first kid I ever wanted to succeed me. I'm sure she could inherit what my generation accomplished. By sharing my hardships, she can become just like me. After saying that, the elderly woman bends backward as far as she can to lift her upper body and lets out an anguished groan, as if she's trying to get her voice heard by someone. But she can't bend backwards for long. I guess the pain of being shot is far too much for her to bear. How dare you speak of love when you've never even considered how she feels. I look down upon the woman both literally and figuratively as she groans in pain. I guess I'm getting emotional because of the extraneous thought that if anyone else were to see my attempt at rescuing Yoru, they'd have a hard time understanding where I'm coming from. Do you think that girl had any choice but to accept my love? The elderly woman creeps on the floor as she speaks. That girl only has me, and I only have that girl. The meaning of those words catches me off guard a bit, and probably not in a good way. The elderly woman pulls a gun out of her pocket. A shock runs through my body, and as I fall backwards, I half-consciously pull the trigger on my rifle. Every sound seems delayed as it reaches my ears, though perhaps my senses are just oddly sensitive. Around the same time as my shoulders hit the carpet, the elderly woman lets out a groan. I guess I actually hit her with that shot in the dark. I feel something soft underneath my head. At, <laughs> At first I think it's poop, but maybe it's just clay. Or maybe it really is poop gross. There are several things I want to make sure of right now, but it doesn't look like I can. And that's because I'm quickly losing consciousness. I'm close to death, even. That elderly woman's got some skills, huh? I guess every woman in this town is tough. Every last one of you takes me for a fool, but you know what? I've got a mind of my own. I take proper care of my pets. I even pay my taxes. I hear her th shrill voice ranting and wheezing. I bet before long she's going to die of blood loss herself. But my death's going to be overwhelmingly quicker than hers. The voice from above must be heard. You think you can take a... The voice from above must be heard. You think you can be a big shot who can defy the missile's voice from above? Don't take me for a fool. You're the fool, you damn criminal. If I experience every sort of death I can imagine, will that me allow me to escape from this place? That strange thought comes to mind, and as soon as I think, yeah, no thanks, my consciousness fades away. The middle act is the low point of the story. You see, I have been vaguely awake for a little while, but my consciousness only starts to clearly form when I hear voices talking from far away. Voices. I know these voices. I realize that the voices belong to the scavengers, and that realization serves as a spark, or an electromotive force, or something that sets my thoughts into motion. Oh, you're awake. When I get up, reflexively, but slowly, Yoru's there. If I tell you to get down, get down, okay? That's why you ended up getting hit. I grumble a complaint. Oh, that's what you meant by get down. What else could I have meant? Um, well... <laughs> oh. Yoru suddenly peers into my eyes, as if she had just realized something important. What is it? I guess I'm not a good listener, huh? Ha ha ha. I let out a dry laugh. But not in a bad way or anything. I see. Well, the first step to solving a problem is to acknowledge that there is a problem. Oh, you sound just like a counselor, Sayako. <laughs> Thanks to Yoru, I'll be able to let out a proper laugh this time. She laughs too. Honestly, I think we're acting a little lighthearted for people whose hearts just stopped. The scavengers wave and call out to us when they notice our voices. They seem a little spooked at first, but Yoru smoothly tells them that we were just on a walk. She's an amazing talker, just a terrible listener. Um... I interrupt before any ch idle chatter can start again. Can you give us a ride back home when you're finished with work? Sayako? Yoru tries to interrupt, but I keep going. And by home, I mean our home. Yoru looks at me like she can can't believe what I just said. A look of surprise mixed with joy. 
I feel a sense of desire. A desire for what, exactly? Material wealth? Food? Attention? Maybe something else? I do feel a little proud of myself, too, of course. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind, but... The leader seems a little hesitant to continue. I really ought to learn their names already. You'll help us finish that work, right? Of course. Yes, of course we'll help. The other two cheer behind their leader. I feel like cheering with them, but it's a little embarrassing, so I cheer silently. With work safely squared away, we sit in the back of the truck as it sways to and fro. I feel pleasantly tired, so I start to doze off. Say, Sayako? Do you think Anya still has that lemonade stand? Since she interrupted my nap, I answer a little rudely. Eh, I guess. Let's use that to start a business. Selling lemonade? Of course not, silly. Perhaps that's your imaginary little sister. Thrusting her finger at a patient is Yoru wearing a white coat. Okay, next. There's a long line. Please pay here. I beckon the patient. Thank you, I feel so refreshed. Uh, he drops some coins into the palm of my hand. It's about enough to buy two, two cups of coffee at Mr. Patel's cafe. By the time I put the money in the register, the next patient's exam has already begun. Whenever I wake up, I hear a man crying inside a car parked outside. Every single day. It's driving me mad. Perhaps that's just an imaginary man. I see. Okay, next. Please pay here. The payment is a flat sum. It's not expensive or anything, but considering the length of the line and the speedy service, it clearly adds up quickly, and it didn't even cost anything to start up. Despite the dirt cheap prices, not a single patient has doubted the authenticity of the medical exam. I suppose not many are brave enough to raise a complaint in the presence of the ninja who single-handedly subjugated the whole church. Oh, how are things going, Miss Bodyguard? Pacifica? Who knew there would be a demand for such a service? It seems even I've been blindsided by your entrepreneurship. Well done. It was Yoru's idea. There's no point selling something as low demand as lemonade. You have to sell something more essential. That was Yoru's basic idea. The town's ghosts are all alone. It's like they've got nobody to turn to for counseling. So you think you can make money off of that? Will anyone pay? I do, and they will. That's the feeling I got as I interacted with that old lady. I summarized that conversation to Pacifica. But Sayako won't listening to everyone's concerns make for a stressful job for her? Nope, there's no need to worry about that. Oh, that's a cut and dried answer. I guess I can appreciate her tenacity at least. Um, no, it's not that she's tenacious or anything. I smile somewhat meanly. It's just that she doesn't listen to others in the first place. The kid and I talk about various things as we pedal our bikes. We have to shout in order to hear ourselves over the clamorous cars and the screeching cicadas. 
She talks about minor scandals between classmates, proper celebrities, clothes she wants, and other things like that. Topics that don't really feel relevant to me. It's like we live in two different worlds, huh? She's popular, even with the boys. During break time, she talks so loudly with friends, it's almost like it's a competition or something. While nobody ever steps up to anyone in her group, her voice in particular is especially influential. It's almost like any kid who opposes her gets immediately crushed by her followers. At school, she's like a mafia boss straight out of a movie. I don't like her, and not just because of how cute she looks. And yet she invited me to go to the movies with her. But she's the same kid I've been with ever since kindergarten. The same kid who was so happy we were put into the same class when we moved up to elementary school. We used to get along since we were so alike, but before I knew it, our speech patterns and our social standings in class completely diverged. One day, when we were on cleaning duty together, we just so happened to get thirsty at the same time and went back to the classroom for bottled water. That's when she invited me to go to the movies with her. Just you and me? I asked. Yes, she nodded. And that's why I'm riding my bike right now. I somehow managed to keep up with her in my cute new sundress and sandals. I'm not as refined as that kid, but I'm passable, I'd say. I know it sounds like I'm not enjoying myself at all, but I really am. It's too hot outside. My favorite season is winter, which is on the exact opposite side of the calendar. But right now, I feel like there are good things to be enjoyed even in the middle of summer. The signal turns red at the last second, so I slam on the brakes. This is probably the last time the two of us can hang out. I'm sad, but I suppose it's only natural, since we've grown to be too different from each other. A big truck passes in front of us, spreading its smelly exhaust fumes. Normally I'd grimace at that smell, but today I'll just deal with it. I don't want to bother her, so I won't draw this in my picture diary. I'll keep this a secret until the day I die. No, even longer than that. I wonder if that kid thinks this will be our last time together, too. Maybe that's why I feel like I have to enjoy myself. You see, as I stare at the signal, waiting for it to turn green, she speaks up somewhat quietly. Yes? My voice is quiet to begin with, so I don't know if she heard. It looks like I'm going to the movies with Asagawa next week. That's amazing. It's not really that amazing. She blushes. Asagawa, he's an athlete and a sort of leader among the boys. I think he's the right fit for going to the movies with her. So is today like a practice run for that, uh, date? She opens her big eyes even wider. She probably wasn't expecting me to say that. She then lets out a spontaneous giggle. Maybe I said something I shouldn't have. If I had said it in the classroom, my school life would be in jeopardy starting the next day. But she smiles as if to tell me that there's no need to worry about anything like that right now. Dunno. I see. The signal turns green. I start pedaling. I hope it goes well for you. I give her some lazy words of encouragement. You really think so? Not really. You know, you've always had a habit of saying things you don't really mean. Haha. <laughs> this is probably the last time we'll hang out together. Nothing will change that fact, but I already think, so what? Hmm. There's a postscript. Oh, hello, Father. I can't remember the last time you were the one who called me. How can I help you? We need to talk business. What, do you have a complaint about my business this late in the game? No, I want you to deal with that ninja. Now? I thought you'd have given up by now. That's none of your business. Well, I suppose your men are useless after all. Indeed, that's why I need your help. Well, yes, it would indeed be child's play. For me, that is. I have just about everything I need ready. Oh my god, it's Pacifica. Since I've allowed you to do whatever you pleased up until now, I assumed you'd agree to my request without a moment of hesitation. Very well, but in return... I know, I know. Wow. That's gonna be a downer. <laughs>